that whatever negativity that is going on, the impact on us may not be too high, and which is why we are here today. Okay, so please pay close attention. Like I was saying, our guest today is Mr. Femi. Out of the 10 agile practitioners, I'll call agile influencers in this space, in the African community space, I would say Mr. Femi is one of them. I can vouch that out of the 10 well-known and trusted agile influencers in this space, Mr. Femi is one of them. I've been working with him for a very, very long time. He is my agile friend. He is my outside agile friend and my brother. So I trust him, and which is why I am so excited that I finally had a time on his calendar to bring him on board today. So a little bit about um, Mr. Femi. So Mr. Femi has over 17 years of project management experience in a telecom information technology, finance, health industry. However, he specialized in system design, software development, and customer service. He is well known for his passion for growing agile coaching capabilities and helping people explore their full potential in this agile space through enterprise transformation strategies and continuous improvement. Mr. Femi also just like me, is also one of the renowned Agile trainers. He offer um, trainings in, you know, certified Agile um, Scrum Master trainings. He has helped thousands of people um, get their foot in the door. You all, you know how that is difficult to land that first opportunity. So that is what Mr. Femi is well known for. And if you ask out of 100 people, if you ask people to describe Mr. Femi in one word, most people always say patience. The patience he has is out of this world. <laughs> I'm not making his head swell or anything. I'm just trying to be very honest. The patience he has, I don't see it as patience. I see it as great patience because I don't know how he does it. You know, sometimes even me, I'll be on his case, but he's always there, very patient. Karen may get frustrated sometimes that Mr. Femi is always patient. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm very happy that today we are having you here. Without further ado, I'm just going to pass the mic to Mr. Femi to speak for himself, you know, given everything I've said. So please, you're very welcome. I'm excited to have you, and I'm very sure that our audience are also excited to have you. I see we have 50 people watching. Um, so please go ahead and just give us a brief about yourself before we deep dive into our topic. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Karen. That was a great one. Thanks for having me, Karen. Um, and thanks also for people who are the audience we're having today. And I want to say, use this opportunity opportunity again to thank you, Karen, for this platform. This has been a very, very great platform. I watch your um, a lot of your shows, a lot of your um, um, platform, I mean, your thing, I watch them. I also share them among my uh, mentees as well. It's This has helped a lot of people. You don't know how far your platform has gone. I remember the last time uh, we invited you to the boat cruise, the Agile boat cruise we had last year. Um, people were asking me, is Karen the YouTuber coming? Is Karen the YouTuber? I said, wow. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for you know putting this together. I really, really appreciate it. I think you've said a lot about me. Um, so another thing that I just want to add is the passion that I have for people to succeed. That is what drives me. And I'm seeing that happening. The passion that I have for our African community to succeed, who comes into this country that thinks, oh, the only thing I can't get to a certain place, the only thing I can do is this, this, that. Mm -hmm. I kind of like change that mindset. I remember, you know, my very first um, a mentee or student, it took me like a year or six months or a year to convince her to come to yeah. this side of, you know, project management. She was thinking, no, 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 no. They've told me I can't do this. But mm -hmm. I said, you're sound, you're intelligent, you can do it. Okay, I think that's a little about myself that I just want to have. You said a lot of things. Excellent. I started my career over 17 years ago. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and beautiful. it's been so far so good. Awesome. Thank you so very much for sharing that insight. So one thing that I'm just curious about, when and how did you 
um, did your agile journey start? I mean, we all are already aware that you've been in this space for over 70, 17 years. Mm. But I'm just curious, how did you get into this whole Agile journey? Okay, so my career actually started as a project coordinator, where I was assisting, you know, project manager, doing a lot of administrative roles, um, you know, scheduling meetings, you know, all those assisting the PM. Then, of course, I transitioned to become a PM, um, where I do a lot of, you know, resource management, budgeting, and all of those things. Then technical project management, moving towards the IT. Um, then, um, then at my agile journey started because I've always been the kind of person that I want. I want to create that environment for people to perform. I want to empower people rather than doing things for them all the time. So I have a friend of mine. Um, I was just chatting with her and she mentioned that, have you heard about Agile? I said, what's that? I know agility, move fast. No, she said, no, there is, you know, a lot of organization now are moving away from the old way of doing things to Agile. Hmm. I said, wow, that's great. So I went to go and do a little bit of more research and I read, hmm, there is this thing called Scrum, right? Then, you know, I started, you know, looking into it, you know, doing more research. That was how I got into it. And I, you know, I went for training. I started applying for a Scrum Master role. Then I, I got myself into that Scrum journey, and you know, the rest is history so far. So wow. good. it's been amazing. It's been rewarding, and it's been fulfilling. Yes, I can, I can definitely attest to that. Wow, that's amazing. So um, now. The reason why we are here today, again, for those who are just joining, I see 58 people connected on YouTube, and then I see a couple of people also connected on the other platform. Our topic of today is to discuss or deep dive into how to add value to your organization and to your teams as an agile practitioner, specifically a Scrum Master. And the reason why we think there is no better time to discuss this and figure out a way for us to do that as individuals or people looking to be impactful in this space is because with all the layoffs going on and as a role of an agile practitioner, you know, is continuously being modified by many organizations. That's what is going on. It is only wise for us as leaders to stay ahead you know, by relentlessly exploring ways to remain relevant in this industry again, which is why we're here today. So I'm just curious, how can you as an agile practitioner add value to your organization? Let's just start from the organizational standpoint and then, we, or let's start with the team. So how would team, you yeah. add value? I think, yeah, I think you yeah. work more with it. We work more with the team, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us how, okay. what's your opinion on how agile practitioners, especially scrum masters can add value, you know, and then we'll move forward with that. Um, okay, so um, thanks, yeah. thanks for that question. You know, this is a question also, this is something that I've always been telling my folks that, hey, um don't when don't your role is not just facilitating right so it's it's not just facilitating meetings of course uh, your primary responsibility is to facilitate the scrum process and help your team organization to succeed in whatever they are doing that's your role your organi i mean the team success is your success so and a lot of times um scrum roles is very difficult to understand because the role is not seen, but felt. So you, as a Scrum Master, joining a team, joining a new organization, you need now to find an opportunity to explain the purpose, the activities, the responsibility of a Scrum Master to them. Maybe your boss, the team, because some people, especially the team you're working with, they have a different perspective of your role. They just think, oh, this guy, what is he doing here? You yeah. can't write code, they'll just be looking at it. So you want to use an opportunity to explain to them, this is my role as a scrum master. I'm not the scrum police. Yeah. I'm not here to BBC to monitor you, but I'm here to help you. You, you can use the eight stance of a scrum master, which is servant leadership, coaching, facilitator, teacher, mentor, Manager, when I mean manager, you're not managing them. You're managing impediments, you're managing the process, you're managing the culture, right? Impediment remover, a change agent. You can use that to explain to them, this is who I am, right? And again, another thing is 
you define, you want to understand what is success to them, being your manager, being the team, so that that would lead you to creating or giving them the value that they want, <clears throat> right? So you want to use that and what does success mean to you? What are you, what are your expectations? What is the things that will keep you awake all night? I'm here to solve that problem. You want to talk to your manager. You want to talk to your team. What are the things that keep you awake all night? I'm here to help you, right? You want to look at all the empirical data. You want to look at their velocity trend. You want to look at, you know, action item from previous retrospective, see what's their concern. You know, you want to look at their sprints and release burn down. You want to look at um, how are these guys responding to change? How are they responding to requests from, um, stakeholders how are they responding to requests from the business you also want to talk about you also want to look at the artifacts right you know product backlog look at the health look at look at their dor dod your definition are done definition already you want to look at their team agreement you know listen to their problem that's why active listening it's very good listen to their problem have one on ones them understand where the shoe paints because this will guide you on how to deliver value to the team right then one of the things you have to take very seriously is effective communication you have to facilitate effective communication because in any team be it scrum team communication is important so to add value to the team you have to ensure that channels are open, communication channels are open and, and, and very effective. You have your practices, you know, daily scrum, um, spring planning, retrospective, where you can do that, right? And you have to create psychological safety as well, because a lot of people wants to feel safe. <laughs> you want to create that environment where people can raise up their hand and say, hey, I need help. Without the where they can share their vulnerability, without the help of without the um, without them not being afraid or fear of being judged, you want to create that safe space. You also want to make them free. They are planning their sprints. They are not scared. They don't have a fear that if we don't finish this, we're going to be yelled at. You want to create that environment. Yes, we want high quality products. When honest mistake happens, you want them to own up to it. You mm -hmm. want to create that space, right? Mm -hmm. um, you also, you know, want truthful answers. You as well, you have to be honest and open to them as well. If you're following up on impediment, if you've not had the time to follow up, just be open to them. This yeah. is where the trust comes in, right? Encourage collaboration as well. You want to encourage team to collaborate, right? So that they could collaborate with themselves to share ideas, you know, to share um, anything, any knowledge that they have to share with their team members, right? To share thoughts, right? You want to encourage things like swarming, peer programming within the team, brainstorming and all of that, right? You want to share that. And also process, you know where we are now. Process is now knowing the process might not be enough. Yeah. You want to understand the engineering practices that your team is working on. You want things like TDD, test driven mm -hmm. development, mm -hmm. BDD, behavioral driven development, unit testing. What's their coverage? Um, what's their um, what coverage they do for their unit testing? Yeah. Code review. I was talking to one of my one of the agile. Um, uh, partnership that he, I mean, I was talking to one of my um, agile, you know, partners, and she mm -hmm. was she. They had this problem in their organization where once there's a problem of trust, once the um, the developer writes a code, right? They check that before they check it in, they raise a pull request, right, for two people to review that code, and once that's passed. Then they now find in this particular case, they found a mistake mm -hmm. and, you know, they made a comment on the code. Of course, the guy was meant to fix it. He just fixed it and said, he said he's fix it mm -hmm. and check the code in. And there's a problem in production, uh -oh. which obviously did not do it. And mm -hmm. I told that that. So this is why some scrum masters need to understand. I'm not saying you should know how to write code. Yeah. Or script. Understand the process. And mm -hmm. I'll ask her that. 
in 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 some organization they do not allow the people that write the code to test right? it no mm -hmm. no not even test to check it in mm -hmm. yeah once it's been approved someone else would check it in someone else will match it to the master branch if that was there then maybe they would have catch it but because mm -hmm. if, if the scrum master does not have all those knowledge he doesn't yeah. know he doesn't yeah. know anything to add to it so it's now important that you on you, you understand the technology you know these guys you understand what or uh, what technology they are using or what tool they are using for their automation testing is it cypress is it cucumba is it selenium you need to understand all these things you need to understand their ci cd pipeline as well if mm -hmm. you're working with the ci cd folks so these are some of the things you need to understand the workflow how their code moves through the system you need to understand it also another important thing that makes you add value to your team is continuous improvement you have to nurture continuous improvement. yeah retrospective is your baby you have to guard it so jealously yes you have to, don't just come with the attitude of what went well what didn't go well <laughs> yeah man we've, we've <laughs> come past that honestly you want to go past that way long time ago <laughs> facilitate an engaging retrospective where people will feel free where people can talk they can just they can share what their problem is you can get things out of people facilitate there is a lot of you know, facilitating um, agile games that you can do. Yes. Um, couple, a few of them, the bad, the good, the ugly, mm -hmm. um, um, Story Oscar, mm -hmm. the um, the Starship, I mean, Starfish and all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you need to get your retrospective jealously so that you're talking about, uh, you know, of course, you need to appreciate the team as well, you know, and get get down do a deep dive into what the problem they're having and also action item coming out of that retrospective you need to make sure that you're following up aggressively that's what i said i'll get there shortly that's where i'm going aggressively aggressively following up on those action items making sure that if you need to assign it to a team member assign it to a team member sometimes you might need to write this put it in your spring backlog that would help you see the have the feasibility of it, right? Then support your team also by aggressively removing impediments, right? And also be honest, like I said, and fair to yourself, right? And also you have to be a servant leader or a true leader that you are. Anything that will make your team succeed, right? You have to be, you have to do that, right? Serve your team willing be willing to serve your team right um also be empathetic empathy for need be supportive anything that they need you need to put their need first right you need to put their need first so you have to create that positive that's pot positive and productive environment right also another thing that i would recommend is encouraging a strong feedback culture right so give feedback, constructive feedback, right? Um, so that's really key. That helps to build a trusting team as well. And if you see anything that you can, that you see training that might, that the team members do need, of course, you have to make sure you're pushing that to the leadership of the organization so that they could get the necessary training for that team member that is lacking. Also, another thing that I wanna add is, you should aim at improving team metrics. I'm not talking about traditional velocity and you know all those things that we've passed mm -hmm. that. You look at you know how responsiveness of that those team, quality mm -hmm. innovation rates, right? Be, right. You, you need to look at the team morale mm -hmm. because that also is important. You don't mm -hmm. want your team members to be burnout. out. You need yeah. to look at the value, mm -hmm. right? Customer satisfaction. This is what I do sometimes when I was a scrum master. Mm -hmm. I normally get the um, the product owner to get emails from the customer, get emails from the stakeholder to let us know how they, what's their satisfaction about um, um, the product that we've built. Are they happy? Are they getting value from it? Right. Also creating that inclusive, you know, team environment where everybody could talk 
building trust, encouraging open communication. Those are few. I think I've said a lot here. Those are few yeah. other things. You know, you're fostering respect. And another thing that I want to say is Scrum values. I love that. And there is book, Coaching Agile Teams by yeah, Lisa, Lisa Atkins, Atkins that mm -hmm. talk about Scrum value being the root of everything. So this is something that I do sometimes. I want to bring out all those Scrum values and I get the team to rate themselves. Let's rate ourselves. How are we doing with this Scrum value? One to five. Mm -hmm. That helps you to know that where is this root to weak? What do we need to do more? Mm -hmm. Are we not focused? Yeah. Are we not respecting each other? And one, if you're not, are we not respect? Because if it respect us, because a lot of people just take it for granted. Mm -hmm. If they don't respect someone, it could lead to things like if they don't respect that person, that person might go into shell, into a shell. Yeah, the person may shut down. This person may shut down. It's not contributing anymore. Mm -hmm. That might lead to focus, ultimately the value you're delivering, right? And you t let's talk about organization real quick here. Yeah, I know it, the thing why the reason why we started with team obviously is so as a scrum master you're dealing with a team. Yeah, your focus is really at team yeah. level. So team, um, thank you all. As you join again, the topic for today is how to add value to your organization and to your teams as a scrum master. So please go ahead and share. Also, if you have questions. Feel free to leave the questions in the comment section. I want you to trust that we will be reserving some time to take your questions and prioritizing the questions that concerns this topic. And then if we have any time left, we can take questions on any other topic. So thank you so much for okay. sharing all that insight. Now let's we, let's go to the organization. Yes, how to bit. add value to the organization. Yeah, so, uh, okay, great. Um, how to add value to the organization. You have this community of practice. You have to be a voice in your company. You're not just going to your COP and doing like this, <laughs> not yeah. saying anything. Mm -hmm. What I mean, you have to so, add vo You have to have a voice mm -hmm. in your CEO. You have to support your community of practice mm -hmm. by providing materials, anything that you think yeah. you should do to support them. Do the right thing as well. I remember one of my um, coach, agile coaches in our community um was talking about how it changed the entire organization simply by because when she got there they don't put the video on mm -hmm. so it was having a meeting with one of the vps and he has his video on and the vp says so why are you putting your video and the guy said it lets me focus mm -hmm. i'm not having a divided attention yeah wow the vps and subsequently the vp started putting its video on before he knows it there is a directive from the leadership yeah that video should now wow yeah that was how we changed the whole thing so do the right thing yeah. right mm -hmm. also teach people outside of the organization you know agile things like you have a stakeholder that you know that is struggling schedule a time with him mm -hmm. in his calendar run through a 30 minute session with him these are the rules of scrum this is how mm -hmm. agile you know incremental delivery right you also can organize Launch and learn, mm -hmm. right? Organize, launch and learn. Where you have your team? What are you? Oh, you guys are working. You are working on automation testing. Great. Can you share that? I'll send it to the wider group, wider audience. Can you share the automation testing? Your venture, the organization is still new in automation test. Mm -hmm. Can you share what you're working on? You as a scrum master, also you can do the same, right? Things on estimation, you, you realize that in a community, community of practice, a lot of people are talking about their team is struggling with estimation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Put estimation slide together, right? Organize a launch and learn, right? Also, assisting, facilitating company wide retrospective. I call it post mortem. I remember a time that I worked with, we had three teams who work on a product. And I remember that we struggle a little bit with dependency. So after we deployed that product, and I just said, I told my boss that I, I want to do something called a postmodern, a company-wide retrospective, right? So I um, set up that, inviting all the team members, all the all the stakeholders. What did we do wrong? What can we do better? Rather than just say, oh, my team, my team, my team, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're working with other Scrum Masters as well, right? You're working with other scrum masters and change agents. Anyway, you as a scrum master, in conclusion, we are the glue that holds mm -hmm. everyone together. Yeah. Yes. We are like Very a glue true. that holds the leadership, 
the team, the business, and all mm -hmm. of those people. Very there. true. Yeah. Awesome. That's amazing. So I just want to add a, a little to everything um, Mr. Femi have said regarding how to be valuable to the organization. One of the, the, the biggest way that, you know, I have always taken advantage of to add value to the organization, you know, as a scrum master is if I am supporting teams and then I realize that we have some certain stakeholders that constantly bump into the team to, you know, take their attention to do something else. I mean, knowingly or unknowingly that they may be distracted. Most of the time, they really don't know the impact of their actions to the teams and the, the goal of the teams. They may think that whatever they are requesting this particular team member to do is really important because they are not into the day to day of the team or the goal to even be able to understand it. And then if I see that it's consistent and it's really affecting negatively the team's work, what I typically do is I approach that leader, you know, seek to understand, okay, what is going on? Um, this team member, how badly do you need this team member to do this specific thing? What is the priority of this work that you are you need help with? And then based on the conversation we will have, it will tell me if this person needs some help to understand how Scrum works and the, 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 the impact of their actions to the team. You know, and most of the time you realize that they really have no clue that their impact was not very helpful to the team. Yeah. So I usually seize that opportunity, yeah. you know, to have that conversation with them and bring them up to speed on how their actions is affecting the team. And with that, because at the end of the day, I believe that they all want the best for the organization, just like we do want the best for the organization. Yeah. Out of conversation, we would now determine true priority. If yeah. what the team is already working on is really the priority yeah. or what this person wants is the priority. And based on that, we will restructure. And moving forward, this person will know when to come in to ask anything or they should just back out. So I have found this approach really, really effective because most of the time you always have those people that will just bomb from nowhere yep. because they are yep. leaders. They are some very important yep. people in the organization mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. these people out of the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need so, to, yeah, so, you need to that, that's why you shield them from yes, excellent appearance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so one thing that, one mistake that I've realized most Scrum Masters make is they will join the, the crew of whining. When things like this happen, instead of them to, you know, approach it from an open mind standpoint they already start judging this person and then they'll join everyone else to whine and whine and complain yeah. which is not yeah. taking nobody forward yeah. you yeah. know so yeah. i just wanted to throw that out there yeah thanks thanks for that yeah. awesome thank you very much so now my next question is what are some challenges scrum masters may face while no. seeking to add value because we know this thing is easier said than done i'm telling you in it's reality <laughs> it's not easy to be honest yeah sometimes yes. just to get to connect with one of these leaders mm. you face so many things they yeah. may undermine you they may mm. not see you like you're worthy to talk to them they mm -hmm. may be too busy to yeah. even listen to you and all of that yeah. so i just want to hear from you what are some real life challenges that scrum master face in the quest to add value to the organization or to their teams number one if you agree with me resistance to change mm -hmm people push back the pushback is just too much you want to do this they're saying nope that's what, what we this is what we're used to who, who are you <laughs> you know yeah. this kind of it's this scrum master yeah. sometimes has overhead and what what are you talking to? you don't you know mm -hmm. even very technical you know what what do you know right so resistance to change is one of the things the team the stakeholders they may be resistant to the change you're bringing in Paraventure, they think oh we do not do re i mean ref refinement meeting mm -hmm. now you want to take another hour of them every week. oh no 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 we're good mm -hmm. we know what we're doing and, and these are the things that cause this resistance to change not mm -hmm. understanding the role of the scrum master not having that agile mindset or understanding yeah. the scrum framework mm -hmm. not understanding the benefit too and also oh, not oh. knowing what is in for them yeah yeah if you don't tell them this is what is in for you this is yeah. the benefit then they just want to push back you mm -hmm. have to tell them the why you are not just making change and again one thing that i always tell scrum and size do not you know go to organization or teams when you join them immediately you want to start yeah you don't want to come you across as a saving jesus yeah, like, exactly. you want to start everyone. condemning <laughs> condemning everything that they've been doing for oh, you're doing this wrong you're doing that wrong this is the right way to do it. This is what, man, you're yeah. in for it. They will you're hate you. It. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> so you want to, and um, one of the things you want to do is you want to, first of all, tell them the benefits mm -hmm. of what this is bringing to them. You know, provide the training and support for the team member, right? It's also, it's also important. Some of the benefits are, you know, faster to market, improving quality, um, increase productivity, flexibility, and all that, and more stakeholder engagement, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to use that opportunity to tell them this is what is in need for you. Mm -hmm. And of course, you also want to tell them that, hey, let's just experiment. What you're doing, great, fantastic, right? Let's just experiment, right? And if it doesn't work, we can go back to your old ways. And also, before you do this, you must have to hand their trust. Yeah, Trust is really important. And if they don't trust you, man, it's, it's going to be tough. So yes. you have to hand their trust. So you are getting into a team. Observe first. See how they're doing things. Make recommendations. Use retrospective to see if they really see what you see, right? To validate your, you know, what you've seen and, you know, um, recommend you now start making recommendation and a change it's not just a day thing it has to be gradual step by step you're not mm -hmm. coming you're changing like six things at a time mm -hmm. you're gonna get push, push back yeah. obviously the, you're gonna get that resistance so building mm -hmm. that trust effective communication is also key you're communicating to them another challenge that i would talk about is lack of commitment mm -hmm. right um, you, if you see, it, it's not coincidence that commitment is one of the values of Scrum, right? Mm -hmm. Commit, every member should be committed to the goal of the sprint, right? And if it's if a member is not committed, it would affect the value they deliver. Yes. It would bring in poor quality, right? Um, to overcome this, one of the things that I you know want to tell you is align the team goals and objective. Right. Let that person see their importance to, you know, the goals that they're meant to deliver to the goals. I mean, to the spring goal. Right. Encourage the team member to take ownership of their work. Empower them. You know, you want to have a one on one and talk to that person. Right. Let's talk. Let's understand ourselves. Do you need help? Mm -hmm. Right. Where do you want me to help? Where do you want me to come in? Is it if you need training, I can speak to this. If you if you need to go on anything, just let me know, right? Mm -hmm. Another pushback that it's lack of leadership support. Yeah. Another, yeah. Um what, what did you call it? Challenge. Another challenge. challenge. Yes. Oh, if if you have especially the middle level managers, mm -hmm. how do you now overcome that kind of you know? Um Without and without their support, you're not going anywhere. You just be yeah. doing from within the team. No, nope, no, nope. you you're not, going be, you're not going nowhere. They have to support you. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you have to do is number one, listen to them, understand the fear they have. Mm -hmm. You know what? Why? Why are you not supporting this journey? Also, another thing that I've done in the past: look for one of the leaders also that love agile. Yes. One of the leaders that is mindset resonates with harder. You want to use that person because and be their ally. Yeah, Very sometimes important. you might the other leaders might look at you as who is talking. <laughs> yeah, you need yeah. that alliance. You, you need, need that, that alliance, alliance with yeah. one leader as well that would mm -hmm. help you, right? And some of them don't even understand the framework, right? Mm -hmm. And also, some technical people see Scrum Master role as an override. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. they are already seeing you. Uh, this guy doesn't even know how to code. This guy doesn't yeah. even know anything. We're mm -hmm. talking about a Kubernetes, Terraform. He doesn't even you know. <laughs> know and one of the things that I tell people is sit down with your developers to understand what they do. I'm not yeah. saying the right code. Sit down, very spend important. time with them. It's very mm -hmm. important. Understand what they're doing so that when they are talking in meetings, you can ask, you know, um, valuable questions 
relevant questions to what they are talking about. When you're in refinement, you can ask questions. Not that you don't, you're completely lost, you're in a meeting, yeah. you don't even know for 40 minutes, you don't even right. know what they're talking about. Yeah, right. and to me, I think, sorry for interrupting you, it's not even just about asking these questions. It's very important to be able to follow along with the conversation that is going yes. on. Yes. So that if impediments are lingering, sometimes these people don't see impediments don't as see we are exactly. wired to see them. Yes. But if you are not able to follow along the conversation they are having, you you will not be able to catch this impediment mm. yourself and it will impact the value. So yeah. you see, that's why it's important that you have an understanding of these things, not because yes. you need to need it to code, but so that you can follow along to better do your own job as a Scrum Master. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for adding that. Yes, because technical people, you need to really mm -hmm. understand them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poor communication is also something. You know, you have to have an effective communication. How we, mm -hmm. how are we going to be communicated? Poor communication can lead to misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You know, it could lead to missed deadline. If, they, if, if the stakeholders or the product owner is not communicating well with the team, right? Mm -hmm. You want to address that as well. You have to encourage open and transparent communication among team members. All right. Also, impediments. If you, especially organizational impediments, might also be um, one of these um, problems, mm -hmm. right? So, so that would stop you from delivering value. Of course, if it was team, team impediment, something within your team, you could quickly get, but when it's not getting outside your, of your team, mm -hmm. you're getting to a point where you're reading a road, you're eating a roadblock to remove that impediment because mm -hmm. it's outside of your team. You need to talk to this person, talk to that person outside of your team. You're running like in a headless chicken, right? <laughs> So that's yeah. why you need to build relationship even with people outside of your team mm -hmm. so you can quickly get help to resolve these these challenges right and also one thing that i also want to mention is team dynamics ineffective team dynamics mm -hmm. yeah conflicts within the team if it's not handled properly conflict is good Right. Yes. Conflict is good. very good. But that's how about, ideas are born. Innovation. That's how exactly. It exactly. Mm -hmm. As long as it's not a conflict where they start to abuse themselves. And <laughs> yeah. healthy, healthy conflict. It's very as long as they're able to focus on the issue and not, yeah, the person. not, not the person. Yeah. Healthy yeah. conflict. So you want to try and build trust. That's important. Right. Mm -hmm. Encourage feedback. I talk about that. Also address uh, that conflict, obviously. And, you know, foster continuous improvement as well. Another thing that I want to talk about is limited resources. Mm -hmm. If you have a guy, maybe you have a team lead or you have one developer, it's working in having like two, three engagements in the organization, working for this team, working for you. No, that's my another challenge. Mm -hmm. And also, if you have, if you don't have enough people, because management sometimes, sometimes they're not reasonable, you know, we don't have enough people and they want to get everything out of you. Yeah. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. that's another thing. Another one that I want to talk about for you as a Scrum Master is an unhealthy relationship with a product owner. Yeah, that might hinder you from doing anything. So your product owner should be your ally. That's one of should the biggest challenges that I see most Scrum Masters face. Yeah, you, know. you have to. Your team, your, your product owner and your tech lead, those two should be your best friend on your team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise you will struggle. And also if you are working on too many teams, they are dumping like five teams on onto your lap. Mm, you you'll be spread you, across two you'll be, teams and two, something you, will suffer. Yeah, something will suffer, right. Mm -hmm. And also maybe lack of understanding between the Scrum team and stakeholders as well. This is where you come in, also be able to bridge the gap. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's so just, just amazing. Everything you shared is mm -hmm. so insightful. It's so packed. I really wish or hope after this session, people will go back, take them, sit down and on flesh, yeah. on package everything you've said here today. Thank you so very much. So yeah. I just want to add one, you know, helpful tip. So there is a book that has changed my life, you know, in my quest to look for ways to help these organizations and the challenges that comes with that. If you've never read... um seven rules of positive productive change please take it down seven rules of, of positive productive change the author of the book is esther derby i actually attended um, his her training 
to cover the entire book. It was a powerful session. So you can get that book on Amazon. I'm also going to put the link um, after the, this broadcast is over on the description box. You can get the link from there directly. Okay. So awesome. Debbie, yeah, he's the, yes. he's the one that wrote the Agile Retrospective. Yes, right? he, she's yes, also she, the author of Agile yeah, Retrospective. She's, she's yeah, good. she's, she's a good. powerful, you know, um, um, mm. change agent in this space. All right. Awesome. Now, my next question is how, how do you measure your value to an organization or team as a scrum master. It's easy to talk about these values. Uh, it's easy to say, oh, get feedback from customers. Uh, uh, it's easy to say, okay, help your teams be rooted uh, in the values. Uh, but you know, with this whole layoffs going on, and you already said that most sometimes um, these organizations or stakeholders, they see scrum masters as, as an overhead. So how, and, and now they are beginning to say it's really important. They want to hold scrum masters accountable yeah. Those days has long passed where scrum masters will just do the soft things that you cannot yeah, we just... feel and you cannot manage. Mm -hmm. Now they want something that they can hold you accountable mm -hmm. to. So how do we measure the value that we are bringing to the organization that we can clearly communicate to people that are looking to know, you know, in a quantifiable way? Okay. This is how I describe that in few words, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your team's success is your success. Yes. As a scrum master. So mm -hmm. make sure you, the team has ability to innovate. What is, what is going to enable them to deliver new things? Because of obviously new things will bring in, new ideas will bring in revenue for the organization, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, and what are the things that would disenable them? So you want to be looking at all these things. How quickly can we get out things out there? Time to market mm -hmm. is another thing that you want to. So this is what I do when I get to the organization. I'm writing things down. So when I'm having things with my managers, I'm writing things down. When I'm reviewing their historical data, I'm mm -hmm. writing things down. This is where I meet you. I have my journal. This is where I meet you, right? At this time, point in time, we are having 10 bugs, five bugs, whatever that number is at every mm -hmm. sprint. By the time I came in, maybe their unit test coverage was 50%. I push in to be 80%. Mm -hmm. Now the bug is reduced from five bugs to for 10 to five. Wow. That's 50% decrease. That's quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quality right there. Right. And that's Amazing. what you're bringing. Mm -hmm. Another thing is customer satisfaction. Right. Also, feedback from the team. How does your team see you as a Scrum Master? Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. Some of Scrum Masters are afraid to get feedback. Yeah. <laughs> they cannot stand what they will say. Yeah. Maybe. They can't stand. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So make sure that your team also are delivering value at the end of every spring. Like I said, your, your the team's success is your success, mm -hmm. right? And make sure that they are meeting their commitments, stability in their velocity as well. They are delivering, they are being stable in their velocity. So these are all these historical data that, we, that you've looked at and you will now become, you, come, you do your, you know, self-assessment after three months of joining, you do the self-assessment after six months, you want to do nine months, you want to do a year to measure yourself on the success of your team, right? Are you following up on retrospective action items? I do sometimes retro on retro. That's yeah. what I got. So mm -hmm. we go maybe after three or four retros, we might look at, look back. Let's look at all the action items that we've come up on all those retros in the last four retros which one is still pending which of those things have we tried and is it working which one is still pending? let's talk about that sometimes the first 30 minutes of my retro will let's look at the last four retros i call it retro and retro i don't mm -hmm. know if there's any word yeah. like that yeah yes. mm -hmm. yeah these are some of the things that i just want to highlight amazing that's how you can measure your own success your very success powerful team. yeah very powerful. I've picked like four or five key points, you know, that anyone can go develop, try it in your organization and come back here and let us know what the outcome is. That's amazing. So I see that right now we have 104 people connected on YouTube, wow. a couple of people connected on another platform. If you're just joining, you're very welcome. We are almost like halfway into the session. And our topic for today is how to add value to your organization 
and to your teams as a Scrum Master, we've covered a great deal of insightful information. After this broadcast is over, you can always go back and do a rewatch. Again, you know that we offer trainings, mentoring, coaching programs, different levels. If you're interested in joining our internal programs outside of the free we offer here, please visit our website. A message is pinned on the chat box there. Click on it. It should take you to the website. Check out the programs we have and see which one works for you. And just sign up and we'll be glad to help you through this journey. All right. So now my next question for you is, you know, in recent years, the role of a Scrum Master has been infiltrated by what some people call imposters. Some people call people who really doesn't know what they are doing at all. They've not gotten any training. They really don't know. They're just there for the money, you know, so which makes jobs, um, you know, the life of really good scrum masters or genuine scrum masters difficult, the job search difficult, the process of doing their jobs difficult, you know. So how do we identify these imposters? And okay. how can we gen how can the genuine scrum masters um you know really stand out? Um I'll do some little comparison now, wow. you know, before I address that. So um, I don't know if I'm permitted to use fake Scrum Masters, right? Go ahead, yeah. Yes. Um, team relationship, when you have a fake Scrum Master, they prefer status quo. The, just the way things are going. They don't want to change anything since it's working for them. Let's this just go that way, right? But a genuine, a real Scrum Master always seek to inspire and motivate people. He, he always look for changes that needs to be made in the team he joins. This is what I tell my scrum. Don't just look away that mm, this is, this is, this, you know that this is not how they should do things. Don't just look away. Always seek to inspire and motivate people. Always be that change agent. Um, and if you want to talk about team event, right? The fake scrum master teaches the team to follow the book. But you, you know, the real Scrum Master, teach them, right, to achieve the objective. Yeah, teach them to achieve the objective in different ways, right? Also, a fake Scrum Master will show the team how something is done. A real Scrum Master, what do they do? They show them how and also why. Why are we doing this? The why. The why is really important, right? Then also, um, a fake scrum master who doesn't who try to solve all the problem you know, for the team, but not only that, the real scrum master will solve that problem, it would also teach the team on how to solve problems. You want to get your team to that high performing, and also you're not stopping there. Yeah, oh, you, I think we lost yeah, my, my connection. Um, yeah. I apologize. Yeah, I guess something that's right. And how to prevent it from occurring again, that's what mm -hmm. you do as a real scrum master, right? Also, feedback. Fake scrum master do not even want to get feedback. Mm -mm. Do not even want to view feedback as important. Yeah. People they just will, say- They will defend. They, they will, will just be defensive. Yeah. They'll just pack it aside. Yeah. But real scrum master always seek feedback, right? Always seek feedback and identify action item where appropriate, right? And also, Change management. Fake Scrum Master, you're the change agent, but he doesn't like change. Often struggle with change himself. But a real Scrum Master, you embrace change mm -hmm. and make sure you make an attempt to be the champion of the change. Right, where it makes sense. And Fake Scrum Master, we're doing fine, nothing to improve. Right? And, you know, it's a real Scrum Master looking for opportunity to improve. improve. Always, yeah. always. Mm -hmm. Fake Scrum Master generally look away when there is conflict, doesn't even want to address it. Avoid it. <laughs> yeah, avoid it where possible. But you as a real Scrum Master, genuine Scrum Master, always trying to resolve conflict. Not only that, you're finding positive in conflict. What did we learn from this conflict? Right. That's what you're finding from there. So that's, that's what, Amazing. and this, yeah, this is what mm -hmm. I tell my folks. Do not look away. Mm -mm. Some people think Scrum Master, I'm sorry to say this, they just think Scrum Master is a making money 
machine. And that is the that thing, me. Yeah, it, it I just my chest. I do, yeah, I just facilitate, and you know that's yeah. it. But then they don't even want to do it. Don't, no. and they see a lot of opportunity to make change. Mm -hmm. They just they think it's not the it's, it's, they, Yeah, they they don't even care. And that's, that's a problem because they make the job of those that are really passionate about this really, really difficult. Yeah, they because make even in the difficult. process of these genuinely passionate scrum masters mm. looking for opportunity, they scrutinize them so bad so just bad. because of what these because of what this have yes, done. they they're mm. not. I I remember one of my students shared something with me. He was just thanking me that um when she joined that organization, she she met a scrum master there. That one has been there for like two three years, mm -hmm. and then. Um, that one was the one training her, but she mm -hmm. realized that there's a lot of opportunity for change. Mm -hmm. So she was implementing this change, implementing this change as they go. Things were getting better. The team mm -hmm. were improving. Team morale was good. So when it's time to cut back, mm -hmm. they had to let the other scrum master go. They told her that she was here for two years. Mm -hmm. We didn't see any of this change. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> She just met us here. She was just doing the same thing that we're doing, mm -hmm. just facilitating meetings. Mm -hmm. That's what the boss told her eventually. That's, that you that's, came here yeah. in the yeah. last one year, you've made tremendous change. Mm -hmm. Now they want to cut. Yeah, they will definitely cut the one they that's just that she was. She, yeah. she was thinking that, why would she have to ask the manager, why would they let her go? Mm -hmm. um, um, she, she thought she was the one. That yeah, like, yeah, that's wow. she's that's like my I look at her, she's been here for two years before I joined. Mm -hmm. She showed me everything that wow. I wow, that's but amazing. That you made the changes that we've been that's amazing. Talking. That's why I usually I usually tell my my mentees, my students that I'm not here to build you to go fit into any organization. That's not what I'm doing. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it. I'm here to build you to go stand out. Yeah, that is why if you're signing up for any of our programs. To me, readiness is key. Mm. If you are not ready to come in and commit mm. to succeed and mm. stand out and create yeah. that impact, then don't don't sign up. I mean, people yeah. know me for that. Mm. I'm not babysitting nobody. Mm. I am there to build you to do it yourself and make a huge difference. Where you go, they should be able to see you and hear the noise you're making, mm. you know, from the impact you're creating. Mm. So yeah, very important. All right. Um, let's take the last but not the no, the second to the last question. <laughs> What is yeah. your best counsel for Scrum Masters, especially in this 2023, at meet ongoing um, layoffs? Yeah, yeah. So what I would tell people is, hey, this is where we are. Knowing the process is not enough anymore. I said that. Mm -hmm. No, it's not enough. Just don't think, oh, yeah, the process of Scrum and the pro I know that's good. But yeah. in addition to that, know what your team is working on. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. I said it, Tyler, I'm not saying you should write code, you mm -hmm. should write scripts, but know the technology they're using. Mm -hmm. Know the tools, the technical tools, know the engineering practices, mm -hmm. know it really well. Please don't just think I'm there to facilitate me. No. And mm -hmm. also don't look the other side, like I said, also bringing that change. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to stay up to date as well. Mm -hmm. Educate yourself, trainings. Don't. Some people have been doing Scrum and stuff for the last two years. The only thing they have is PSM1. <laughs> exactly. That, 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 yeah, that, it's a no-no now. <laughs> they've not attended any conference for two years. No workshops. They've not read any book. No any other thing, any other, no, they're not Nothing. developing themselves. Nothing. The time has gone. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm praying, I'm praying you do not, you, you know, you do not have any problem at that. So these are, so attend conferences, spend money on yourself. There is yes. Chrome, invest in yourself. Yeah, invest in yourself. There is Chrome conference coming up. Mm -hmm. Right. Even if it's just virtually. Yeah. Join. There are a lot of workshops around out there. Mm -hmm. Also, um, read blogs, right? Read books. Karen, just thanks for that. I put the name of the book down. Mm -hmm. Some people have not even read one book. book mm -mm, two years. Never. You can't, the time must pass. You need to invest in yourself, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. I usually tell people that self-investment is the best gift you can ever give yourself. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, that's the best asset you can ever give yourself. You can buy mm. all the Libotin shoes. You can buy mm. all the designer, whatever. Those are all abilities. Yeah, but all abilities. Investing in yourself, it, would, it never goes away. 
Mm. The knowledge may not be useful at that very mm. point in time, but down the road, it mm. will definitely be useful because it never mm. goes away. Yeah. You know? So it's very important. Um, all right. So thank you so much. This has been an amazing, impactful, knowledge pack okay. session. <laughs> so um, I'm just, I know people are, would be wanting to connect with you. Mm -hmm. So if people are interested and wanting to connect with you, how can they reach you? Um. Yes, I, I think I'm, yeah, like I told you, I'm not very good with social media. I can drop I know. My, <laughs> I, I, I can drop my number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Just want. tell me the number I can type. Uh, so, can type yeah, I, no, no, type it. 612 mm -hmm. 402 mm -hmm. 1495. So and that's four. that's the easiest way to connect. Awesome. All right. That's Mr. Femi's number. Again, yeah. we are almost wrapping up. If you have questions, just drop the questions just there. We will it. address these questions as we before we close. I promise. So um, thank you so much again. Before we You're take welcome. any questions, I just want to let you or remind you all that the topic for today was how to add value to your teams and to your organizations as a Scrum Master. If you've missed this uh, part of the session, you can always go back and do rewatch after the broadcast. And you know that we also offer different programs, you know, training, mentoring, coaching. We coach people that are already working as Scrum Masters and they're looking to add value. We mentor people that are looking to get into their first role as a Scrum Master. They are in between, you know, just having a certification or certifications and landing a job. They are struggling. That gap, that's what we are specialized in. We've helped thousands of people already in the past couple of years to be able to break into the, the space. And then if you're just a starter, you're looking to gain the foundation on the conceptual knowledge and pass the certification exams, feel free to visit our website. The, the message is pinned there on the chat. Click on that link and it should take you to our website and just check out the programs and whatever works for you, please. If you have questions, just call us on the number um, from the number on the side as well. Thank you all so much. Now, let's, I just want to say, Mr. Femi, thank you. Yeah, it's been well, a privilege um, to have you here today. Yeah, and well, as um, always, every time we have an interaction, being it on a professional platform, on a Christian platform, just so you all know, he is a very spiritual person. So we also know ourselves like that from church and all of that. So we, I mean, we are really close friends and we've been doing a lot in this space for a long time. Um, so now um, let's just scroll through this and take any questions that um, people are putting here. Someone said, um, oh, wow. I see everyone is just yelling your name here, Mr. Hey. Hey. <laughs> wow, these guys are knowledgeable. A nice round, insightful information from Femi. Oh, wow. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, we don't have so many questions. So I guess they, they, <laughs> you've, done it. you've done a perfect job to a point where we don't have so many questions. Uh, let me see. Thank you so much. Okay, someone said, thank you so much, Mr. Femi and Karen, for the great insights, great knowledge sharing. You're welcome. Uh, appreciate you. Um, let's see. All right. Okay. I, I really, we don't have so many, we don't have questions today. That is really oh, wow. great. <laughs> wow. Someone said, that's my coach. He's very good. Oh my God. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. Yeah. So really we don't have questions again. If wow. you think of any question regarding this topic and you would like to know the comment section is there for that purpose, please drop your question there and not just question if you have any contribution to make about the topic we've covered today how to add value to your teams and to your organization as a scrum master please feel free to also leave your input you know here is that free space where we share ideas learn and grow together and no one is judging no one because yep, none of yep. us knows we are not perfect yep yep yes. that's the spirit yes. no yes. stupid yes. question that's no, what no, i say no. <laughs> no 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 we are only here to make progress we exactly. are not here to be perfect at all because we will never ever be perfect awesome all right thank you so oh someone said someone is asking i was always almost closing someone said what will a po say about you if we call your po to talk about your relationship this was an interview question Oh yeah, that's that's um a little bit out of context, but yeah, I mean I yeah, can yeah I can people. yeah. So yeah. what will a PO say about you if they call your PO to talk about you? I mean that's a blank question. That's I mean that's a blank check for you. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's a, you just have to continue to sell yourself. Exactly. You just <laughs> whatever you that can sell you. Honestly, yeah. they're not going to call any PO. Right? <laughs> they don't even exactly. know. Continue to sell yourself. Right. <laughs> 
the PO will say, oh, I'm the best person ever that mm -hmm. he has worked with. Yeah. I have a very good relationship with my PO. We, you know, we go out together apart from work. We, we've built that relationship over the years. Mm -hmm. The PO will tell you I'm the best person that could help. Right. Very proactive, highly intelligent. Con just continue whatever. you Whatever you can say, sell yourself with. That's a blank check, honestly, mm -hmm. to me. Don't yeah. be afraid that they'll go, they won't call anybody. <laughs> exactly. They're not yeah. calling anybody. Yeah. So that's an opportunity. I have you. a great, you know, yeah, yes. emotional intelligence, empathy mm -hmm. for need. I'm a great servant leader. Mm -hmm. I always offer help. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so knowledgeable to the fact that, you know, sometimes I help my PO to write user story. Mm -hmm. I go to him with into stakeholders meeting to help facilitate and get mm -hmm. results out of it. You can share a story. You know, yes. there was a time mm -hmm. your PO was having issues with conflicting a priority from different stakeholders. You have mm -hmm. to step in, right? Yeah. Into a meeting with the PO, we into, into them. You get it, you, you facilitate a round table with all the stakeholders mm -hmm. and you help them resolve that problem. That's yeah. been keeping my PO awake all night. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Let me add something. If you don't have confidence, regardless of all of the things we are saying here, you will not be able to apply it. Mm, yeah. So the secret to succeed with this question kind of question is your confidence exactly. and there is no way your con you can have confidence if you don't have the knowledge knowledge has a direct relationship with confidence so mm -hmm. knowledge is power so again we can give you all the answers here but if you have that knowledge gap trust me you will struggle even on the job even eventually you land that job it's gonna it's gonna catch up with you so again, it's very important. If you know that you have some knowledge, you got to build yourself first and then mm. worry about how to, to respond to these interview questions. I just wanted to add that. Okay. Um, yeah, so I see all oh, on TikTok. Thank you so much. I see all your comments there. I appreciate that. I'm still learning that part of social media. So please be patient with me. Uh, I see so many questions coming in now. Okay, so we will address some and then we will carry yeah, some forward. Kind of over time, yeah. But yes. I can still spend a little bit more time. Okay, you know, so let I have a hard stop, but I can I can spend a little bit, a little bit. Maybe All right, no problem. Minutes. Maybe we can take this one as the last question and then we wrap it up. Yeah. All right. So Ekene uh, Meniru, how would you ensure action items from a retro are being worked on and effect affected to improve the team? So one of the things you want to do with action item is assign owners to it. You don't have to be the person that would do all those actions that mm -hmm. is raised from the retrospective. Have owners for them in the team. So that and you can you have well, another thing you can do is write them up and put it in the spring backlog. So every day you're talking about it in the daily scrum. So mm -hmm. that the person that owns uh, that action item is not even comfortable anymore. <laughs> hey, Mike, where are you with this? Hey, Mike, mm -hmm. where are you? Do you have any updates with us? Right. And also you have to then during the next retrospective, you have to review those. These are the first things you need to do in the re next retrospective. Let's review the action item. Whatever we implemented, is it working? Mm -hmm. Do we need to revisit it? Right. You don't, it's not just a one time thing. Mm -hmm. Remember, I talked about doing retro upon retro. Mm -hmm. These are some of the things that I review again. The retro that we, oh, we've talked about it in the next retro, but another mm -hmm. retro, maybe four retros of, you know, another three sprints. You want to look at them again. What, which one do we still have? Right. Which one have we implemented? Is it working? What improvement have we seen? You let the team talk. That's the way I would. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. As we wrap up, humble dad, mm -hmm. you say that um, you you have Scrum Master certification for a long time, but can't find a job. That's what we do. Just go on our website, um, beingagileconsulting.com. Um, sign up on any of our programs. That's what we do. We will help you um, achieve that goal. Again, thank you okay. all so much. All Mr. right. Andrew. It's thank been a pleasure you. having you here today and um, hope to talk to you another time. No thank problem. You. And thanks, Karen, for the amazing job you're doing. And thanks also for everyone that joined in. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Bye, yeah, everybody. Bye. <laughs>